Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very elegant problem for you guys today. Uh, this one is from the 2012 USA Team Selection Test for the International Math Olympiad. And I first saw it posted by Evan Chen on the Art of Problem Solving Forum. Um, so it looks fairly simple, but I'm warning you, it's a lot more difficult than it looks. Um, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so now I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a cyclic quadrilateral ABCD. Um, the diagonals AC and BD meet at a point P. Uh, then you take the perpendiculars from P onto AB and uh, CD, um, and you, you label them E and F. And then the intersection of uh, CE and BF is G, and we wanna show that PG is perpendicular to EF. All right. So there were a lot of different solutions to this problem. Um, none of them I found were really that easy. Um, so I'm gonna, um, first I'm just gonna start out by making a couple of observations. Um, so P is perpendicular to AB and PF is perpendicular to CD. And also we know that these angles EBP and PCD are equal. Um, that's easy to see because angle ABD is equal to angle ACD. So I'm going to write that out. Okay, so angle EBP is equal to angle ABD, which is ACD, which is PCF. And so therefore, um, since BEP and CFP are both right angles, we know that the two triangles are similar. All right. Um, and the hard part is figuring out where to go from here. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to apply something called the gliding principle. And I've mentioned this on my channel before, but never really gone into too much depth into it. But basically it says if you have two triangles that are similar and they're oriented the same way, and you connect the corresponding vertices and take the midpoints, then the, the new triangle formed by the midpoints is similar to the original two. Um, so I'd like to try to apply the gliding principle to uh, triangle BEP and CFP, um, but the problem is they're not oriented the same way. Uh, you can't get from one to the other by just rotating and scaling and translating. You would have to f do a reflection at some point if you wanted to get triangle BEP to equal triangle CFP. So since they're not oriented the same way, I'm going to construct a, I'm going to reflect the triangle CFP over CF, okay, so that it's now triangle CFP prime. So now we can apply the gliding principle to triangles BEP and CFP prime. And I'm going to give a, I'm going to put a link to um, a paper on the gliding principle um, in uh, my notes below in the video. So check that out if you want. Um, but we know that triangle CFP prime is congruent to triangle CFP. And so if we apply the gliding principle, um, then the midpoints of BC, uh, EF, and PP prime have to form a triangle that's similar to those original two triangles. So I'm gonna write that out. Um, so by the gliding principle, if we take the midpoints of BC, so those are two corresponding vertices in those two similar triangles, and then the midpoint of EF, which are the E and F are the two right angles, and PP prime, uh, if we take those three midpoints, they have to form a triangle similar to both BEP and CFP prime. All right, so I'm going to label those midpoints. So the midpoint of BC, I'm going to call H. Uh, and then the midpoint of EF, I'm going to call I. So I'm going to draw in segment EF, and I is the midpoint. And then the midpoint of P and P prime is just F by definition, because I just define P prime to be the reflection of P over F. So that means that triangle HIF has to be similar to the original two triangles. So I'm going to write that out. Um, so triangle HIF has to be similar to triangle BEP um, and the other triangle too, obviously. But that means that angle HIF has to be 90 degrees. So, so HI has to be perpendicular to IF. 
Okay, so this is kind of interesting because it means that the um, if you take the midpoint of BC and the midpoint of EF and you draw the segment between them, it's perpendicular to EF. So that's kind of interesting. And that's especially interesting because we can do the same thing um, that we did with segment BC, but we can instead do it with segment AD. Um, so the whole thing, the whole, my whole point of constructing P prime was to use the gliding principle. But now that I already did it, I'm going to erase point P prime. Um, we know because I just want to use it to show that HI is perpendicular to EF. Well, we can do the same thing if we let J be the midpoint of AD. Then similarly, JI has to be perpendicular to EF. Um, so, and if JI is perpendicular to EF, or in other words, JIF is 90 degrees, then that means JI and H have to be collinear. So now it's starting to look kind of interesting. All right. Um, so now that we know that, where do we go from here? Well, there's a lot of midpoints of sides. So this got me thinking to try to use um, Gauss's theorem from the last video. And to be honest, first I solved this problem and then I decided to put up the video on Gauss's theorem. So it wasn't that much of a coincidence, but um, I'm gonna try to apply it and I'm gonna do that by letting uh, lines A, B, and C, D meet at a point K. Okay. Um, so if I wanna apply Gauss's theorem, basically I wanna find a quadrilateral so that H and I are two of the midpoints um, when I try to find the Gauss line of a certain quadrilateral. Okay, so uh, it turns out that if you look closely, um, if you take quadrilateral uh, KBGC and we try to find the Gauss line of that quadrilateral. Um, so if you're not sure what the Gauss line is, see my last video. So I think it might be number 48, um, I'm not sure. But basically if we have quadrilateral KBGC, if we take the midpoint of BC, that's H. Uh, if we connect um, the two pairs of opposite sides, we get E and F. And if we take the midpoint of EF, uh, we get I. And that has to; those two have to be collinear with the midpoint of KG. So I'm going to draw in KG, and I'm going to let L be the midpoint. And I, H, and L then have to lie on the Gauss line of quadrilateral uh, this should be KBGC, not ABGC. All right. So, and and what what we did with um, points H and I, we can do the same thing with points J and I. So instead of quadrilateral KBGC, if you look at quadrilateral uh, KBPC, um, then the midpoint of um, BC is H. Um, I'm sorry, it should instead be, uh, instead of ABGC, um, it should be, wait, is ABPC right? Yeah, A, um, KBPC is, yeah, that's the right quadrilateral. So if we take KBPC, uh, H is the midpoint of BC, and J is the midpoint of AD, because A is where um, the pairs of opposite sides meet, and, and D is where the other pair meet. So H and J have to meet on the midpoint of KP. Uh, so the diagram is starting to look a little bit squished. Um, but basically, J and H um, have to be collinear with the midpoint of KP. Now, the diagram looks pretty smushed, and believe it or not, I actually worked pretty hard to not make it look as that smushed. So when I started trying to draw originally like a different cyclic quadrilateral, these two points, L and M, are even more smushed than they already look, believe it or not. Um, but basically, um, using the theorem of the Gauss line on KBPC, J, H, and M have to be collinear. So I'm gonna write that out. Um, okay, 
So this should be K uh, B P C, not K E P C. Okay. Um, and so therefore, all five of those points have to all lie on a line, J, I, H, M, and L. And But the thing is, we know that M is the midpoint of KP, and L is the midpoint of KG. So if that's true, then that means that um, if you look at triangle KPG, so this very, very thin sliver of a triangle, um, ML has to be parallel to PG. So I'm going to write that out. So since M is the midpoint of KP and L is the midpoint of KG, then ML has to be parallel to PG. So that means this whole line through J, I, H, M, and L has to be parallel to PG. And that's kind of why I sort of went in this direction in the first place, because I knew that J, H was perpendicular to EF uh, from before. And I wanted to show that PG is perpendicular to EF. Uh, so if I could show that PG is parallel to that line, that would have solved the problem. Okay. And now that we know that's true, PG is parallel to ML, but ML is the same as line GH, or line JH. So since JH is perpendicular to EF, then PG also has to be perpendicular to EF, and that solves the problem. So this was a very tricky problem. Um, it took me a long time to figure it out. Um, and there were some solutions that didn't involve the Gauss line, um, but, but none of them were easy. Um, so if you can think of an easy solution to this, um, feel free to post it in the comments. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.